Boom, what's happening guys? If you're a coach or a consultant or course creator or high ticket affiliate marketer, and you'd like to know the very simple process you can use to develop your own high converting lead magnets that pre-sells a lot of your coaching and programs, this is exactly what I'm gonna cover in this very video. Now, before I dive into that though, welcome to the channel. If this is the first time here, I'd like to say an incredibly warm welcome to you. My name's Jamie Gardner, and since 2011, I've been a coach, high ticket affiliate marketer, ad strategist, you name it, I've pretty much given everything a shot at this point. And what I talk about on this channel is really me just documenting the last 12 years I've been online, having worked with 900 plus students, won awards for surpassing millions of dollars in revenue through different businesses. And that's it. So if that's of interest to yourself, feel free to hit the subscribe button, drop a comment, let me know if there's anything you'd like to learn here. And of course, uh, hit the like button if you get value from this video. With all that being said, let's dive straight into it. Boom, what's up guys, welcome back and thank you once again for joining me. So if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna give you access to the four phase framework that I use to scale my business to as much as 51K in a single month. But for now, let's dive straight into it. All right, so the first cab off the rank is you need to find a way to build authority. And the reason why authority is so unbelievably important is it eases the pressure on the sales process. The more authority you're able to create in your brand and in your business, the easier it is to sell stuff. As simple as that, right? Means that you don't need to be as good at copywriting. You don't need to be as good at crafting offers. You don't need to be as good at selling if you have a bunch of authority. And here's why. Number one is authority creates a sense of trust and credibility. So if you've got credibility, you have trust. If you have trust, then that person is more likely to trust that you have the viable solution to their particular problems, okay? So once you've got that sorted, then the rest of it is a lot easier because they've already established that you have a sense of expertise that can help them with their specific problem, okay? Pretty cool stuff. Now, how do you do that? Uh, a couple of ways. First and foremost, who are you, right? What do you stand for? What do you stand against? Who exactly are you? How can you help that person out? Um, what exactly have you done? You might have heard me say, if you've followed my channel for a little while, that I've won awards for surpassing million dollars in revenue through a single funnel. Rolls off the tongue real nicely. Purely by virtue of me having these awards behind me, some of you that are in the ClickFunnels world, you might instantly notice that and you might go, oh, okay, yeah, he's, he's done some stuff, right? It doesn't mean that I am an expert in absolutely everything, just means I have done some stuff. So therefore, there's an element of credibility that comes with that. I also talk about my results. I talk about the 900 students that I've helped. I talk about having multiple programs and helped a whole bunch of people and life-changing results for a whole bunch of folks, right? And so that is... Although it might sound really strange when you first start doing it, because it feels like it all, it's all about your ego, it's really not. What it is, is to establish authority in the minds of your prospects, right? So, uh, why do you get into this stuff, right? Tell a little bit of a story about this. Now, it doesn't need to be long-winded, and of course, every lead magnet doesn't need to be the same, like it doesn't have to be this big, huge, drawn-out thing. In fact, if you wanted to condense it down, and you wanted to like cut through all the stuff, and just create a really to-the-point thing, uh, what you can do is have authority, a bit of authority, a bit of uh, telling a story, a bit of value, and a call to action. But for now, what we're going to do is expand upon those points, make sure that we uh, touch on all bases and, and create the best lead magnet we possibly can to do a lot of the pre-selling of our programs, coaching courses, all that type of stuff as well. All right. So uh, any achievements in either online or offline, something that you can carry across from your offline world into the online world, anything like that that you can talk about. Uh, and the typical framework for stories, of course, is, you know, I was over here and now I'm over here. I was stuck and life was crap, but now I'm over here because it's awesome, right? So if you can uh, start to express those types of things and that person can relate to you, now you're building authority along the way. So uh, it could be, for example, that, you know, I was here and now I'm here and this is what's happened in the middle. So, you know, I'm, I'm now a, a, a credible figure with authority, but I wasn't. I was just like everyone else. And here's what happened in the middle, okay? And sound familiar? It's just a little tie down that I like to use. Uh, the reason being is that our subconscious mind cannot not answer a question. And so therefore, if you are tying the reader, if it's a, if it's a written um, lead magnet, if it's a written lead magnet, then you're tying the reader into that. Same with all your text and everything as well. Sound familiar? Yeah, it does. Sometimes not. You know, and this might sound familiar to some of you. Right? Hopefully that makes sense, right? So what can you talk about to build authority? And as part of my Ultimate Marketing Mastermind program, what I teach my students is 
first and foremost, how to go and build a community online, whether it is via Facebook groups or I've got students that are over on the school, uh, really doesn't matter. It's the same principles and effectively just monetize. It doesn't matter if you've got 20 people in your audience, doesn't matter if you've got a thousand people in your audience, it's about what you need to do in order to monetize that audience. So that's what I teach effectively. I start with organic stuff. We eventually move on to automate certain processes, all that type of thing as well. But I say that because you might be thinking if you're relatively new to this whole online world and you've just started your brand new Facebook group and you're like, this is awesome. But you might be thinking, well, what do I have to offer? I'm still sort of learning this stuff myself. And here's the cool thing is that even if you get your first 10, 20, 50, 100 members into your community, you're already miles ahead of the person that is not even started yet, right? So you are miles, miles ahead of them. And I remember when I first got started with my group, this is way back in 2018, had to think about that one. Um, I didn't know how to get my first 10 people in there. I was inviting my mum and my family and pretty much everyone else uh, that I knew that I, I thought might be interested in it, but it was, just, it was a struggle. And then I was like, well, how do I get to 50? I got my 50, I was like, how do I get to 100? And so the people that were, I was at 50 and they're at 100, I'm like, how are you growing so fast? This is crazy. My groups have got about 5,000 people in it now, and you're welcome to check that out. There's a link below if you want to um, join that as well. Uh, but that could be something that you speak about. You could have a couple of low ticket sales. You might be just getting started and you might have made a five, ten, hundred dollar sale, and you might be able to leverage that credibility and say, well, here's the simple five step process I use to close my first sale in less than a week, right? Super simple. That would be a great hook. Now, it can be other things that are intangible, such as engagement. Now, if you're on Facebook and you're in the marketing world, you're an organic marketer, and you happen to stumble upon someone's timeline and they've got thousands of comments, maybe not thousands, but they've got hundreds of comments, you subconsciously validate that person as an authority. You might see them and go, oh, well, they must know some stuff. They must have impacted some people before. And it's a subconscious thing. So therefore, you can create that. It's not really that difficult. All you need to do in order to create engagement on pretty much any platform is follow the rules of the platform. And what do they want? They want you to stay on that particular platform. Right. So how do you do that? You would go and if you're on Facebook, you would connect with people and you would engage in their content and you'd say, hey, that's a really great post. I really enjoyed reading that. It's a really relevant thing to my specific issue that I'm experiencing. Thanks so much for the great advice. Right. You, you put comments on that are relevant to the actual topic at hand. Now, what happens is it's kind of like a map, right? If that's your map and you every time you put a comment on, it's like dotting a new flag and that map and so your army of prospects when they come through they're going to start seeing all these flags with your name on it now some of those prospects some of those amazing people out there they're going to reciprocate they're going to go well that person they have been commenting on myself for a little while and so therefore your content is going to start popping up in their feed they might start to engage back and if they do that pushes the content further and further out to the algorithm which then gets more comments, right? Pretty cool stuff. So that might be something that you can leverage that other people aren't doing. Uh, social proof, same sort of deal, right? Um, really, really, really simple. If we go out there and just get a bunch of testimonials, it's really not that, not that complex, right? Now, if you were to go do that and a little game plan for you, if you're interested is quite simply reach out to five people that you've been communicating with say, Hey, look, I've got nothing for sale, but I'd love to hop on a call and see if I can actually help you out with something regarding your specific situation as we discussed. Um, all I ask is that you provide a testimonial. Is that cool? Yep, grab five of those. If you can get it on camera, better. If not, don't stress. But ideally, if you can get it on camera, that allows you to uh, get it edited, right? So that way you can download the audio file, you can get it transcribed. Now you've got all sorts of stuff that you can use in your social media. Pretty cool stuff, right? Also elevates your authority. Screenshots. You know, it's a little bit of a, I don't know, feels like a, a bro marketing tactic in some ways, but it works, right? Like if you put a screenshot up of a $5,000 sale that's just landed in your Stripe account, it looks good. People, people warm to that. Uh, likewise, if you're an affiliate and you've got a whole bunch of affiliate sales, it is a magnet. People are really intrigued by that, right? Um, video testimonials is another one, like say, same deal. Now, another way that you can create authority without having a whole bunch of authority already is by uh, either part of the value thing that you're gonna add is um, to, to quash 
false beliefs. Um, so here's one for you. Now this is a really interesting one because obviously I've won awards for building out funnels, things like that, right? So this is an interesting one, but I actually tell my students inside my Ultimate Marketing Mastermind program to, to not use funnels to start with, right? And so therefore a lot of people when they're like, hang on a minute, Jamie, what do you mean? Because you've done the and you're with ClickFunnels and then, mm, you know, make sure Russell doesn't hear that one, mate. Um, yeah, I am actually a little bit worried about that. Maybe I shouldn't put this on YouTube, come to think of it. Otherwise, some hired goons from ClickFunnels might smite me down. Anyway, so it's controversial in some regards, right? But then imagine that if you are new to affiliate marketing, new to coaching, and your assumption is, well, I must need a funnel in order to get the stuff working. But I come along and I say something that is completely against the common opinion. Now, all of a sudden, my authority has actually just gone up because like, well, hang on a minute, what, that's unique. Why would he say that? Why, what, what's the deal here? I can't like, I'm intrigued by this, right? So if you do, and you're able to confirm your argument, you can't just kind of like make these grandiose statements without confirmation, but if you're able to confirm your argument, then all of a sudden you're developing authority as you go through and you're providing value to people because if they have a false assumption about it and you're like rip that false assumption away you bust that false assumption now things is looking pretty cool right which then means that if that has been shattered then the trust factor for you as a brand has actually just gone up pretty cool stuff now okay so some context if you're curious why do i say you don't need a funnel because here's the way that especially in affiliate marketing is usually what gets taught you need a funnel, you need an email list, you need to uh, run some ads, you need to have a website, all this type of stuff, right? Which is fine, they all work, it is all an important aspect of your business at some point. But imagine if on top of learning how to sell and create content and reshape your social media platforms into becoming a magnet for your ideal audience, as well as learning the psychology about selling, offer creation, all that type of stuff, if on top of that, you also had to learn all the techie stuff, like funnels, like auto email automations, things like that. Um, like I say, you will need to learn it at some point. It's a valuable part of your business. But when you're getting started, the quickest, hands down, the quickest pathway for you to go out there and start selling, especially high ticket stuff in particular, is to just message folks, just to communicate, build a relationship, get to know them, see how you can help them out and whether you can actually help them out. And of course, and I borrowed this line off uh, Aaron Fletcher, great coach, by the way, uh, he talks about swim lanes in your business. So if you start with one swim lane, and that swim lane is quite simply, I'm going to go and craft an offer that helps my ideal audience, and I'm going to book a call, and I'm going to try and sell some high ticket stuff, right? That could be one swim lane. Then once you've got that activated, and you go out there and you DM some folks, and you build some rapport, and you build a bit of clout in your audience, and then you bridge over the call, and you sell some stuff. And then now, you're like, well, okay, I want to automate certain elements of my business. So now I'm going to add a new swim lane in. Great analogy. Thanks, Aaron. Right. Um, does it need to be complex? No, it does not. Right? Like literally, even Alex Hormozzi in his $100 million leads book and launch that he did, which was amazing, by the way, uh, he talked about two out of four wet methods for going out and finding leads is to DM folks, cold DMs, warm DMs. Crazy. This is something I've been teaching for years, right? So even someone at his level is still prepared to do that. Perhaps not now, of course, but you know, he was, right? It was pretty cool. Um, so no, that's not complex. That's literally just messaging people. How hard is that? It's not hard at all. Low ticket versus high ticket. So there's a debate, what's better, high ticket or low ticket? They both work. I've met lots of people that are making millions of dollars out of both. Uh, I prefer for a, a startup, to have high ticket. And the reason for that is basically, you don't need that many of them to hit your financial goals really, really quickly. Meaning that you don't need a huge audience. You don't need to go viral. You don't need to have a large following on social media in order to basically earn a substantial income online. Conversely, if you are the other way and you already have an existing audience, then maybe you can look at low ticket. Or maybe you can do a hybrid because what happens is if you're able to sell something at a low ticket level, then that customer is 60 to 70 percent more likely to buy something else based on your recommendation again. Now, I, I don't know the source for that. I think it was like an Adobe research thing, if I remember correctly. Do your homework on that one, but I definitely found it true in my own business. Now, the other thing with low ticket to high ticket is the LTV, the lifetime customer value extends, right? If you get a low ticket buyer and you're able to provide 
a disproportionate amount of value up front, they are more likely to buy stuff in future, both low and high ticket stuff. So there's an argument for both, right? Anyway, just trying to give you guys an example of the types of value you might want to give. Um, you know, ads versus no ads. If there's a contrarian view about running an ad or no ad, you know, that's going to be polarizing to some folks. And so therefore, if you can dismantle a false belief around something, it's very, very powerful. Um, hard, simple, but not easy. Okay, so uh, in affiliate marketing, it all often gets sold as this kind of like easy, do no work, passive income type gig, when in reality, it's super hard. Now, I say super hard because it's actually unbelievably simple. It's like literally just referring a customer over to an existing product that solves their problem. It's not that complex, but the problem is with our mindset, it's usually where the, the issues come in, right? Um, it gets touted as a get rich quick scheme. So if you're able to throw a rock at the idea of it being a get rich quick scheme, then now you're doing better for your audience as well. Uh, building an email list, this is something that everyone gets told. Yeah, you can. Uh, I've got an email list, it's only about 1500 subs, makes thousands per month, it's really, really cool. But you don't need to start there. It's just one mechanism. It's just one way to do it, right? So if you're throwing rocks at this idea, then it's going to make people wonder, hang on a minute, what's, that's interesting. Right, moving on. Um, value can also be like how to do something. Um, what versus how? So it's like the, uh, there's a thing in sales, which is um, sell them the, what is it, sell them the, give them what they want and sell them, no, sell them what they want, give them what they need, there they go. But it's the same when it comes to this type of stuff, it's explain the what, but not the how, right? It's the same type of, type of thing. I personally, I like doing the how, because in my opinion, it's like, well, that actually helps the person out. It's not just like, hey, here's how to, you know, there's a thing called a Facebook group and you make money from it. Oh, really, what, what is that? It's a Facebook group, oh, wow, that's cool. Well, here's how you do it, right? And so if you follow my channel, go and snoop through some of my other videos and whatnot, I, I teach a lot of the stuff and how you can start to monetize as well. So that's one of the things I like to do. Um, how, how I got clarity as an example. So uh, what I mean by that is, if I say to you guys, hey, here's how you should create your lead magnets, which I kind of have through this video. But if I reframe that, I say, here's how I was able to get 100 leads in less than eight days by doing this one simple thing. It's called a lead magnet. Here's how you do it, right? So it's a, a little bit different because it's based on my experience, not like you should do this type of stuff. Um, how to do X without Y. So think about the biggest frustration that someone has. And so uh, X, by the way, is like a dream outcome. So how to do dream outcome, dream result without the thing that people hate doing, basically. If you can do that, if you nail that somehow, now you've got, uh, you got people interested and you've got buyers, basically. Um, think about other incentives. Uh, and I've put this in relation to a Facebook group, for example. And so the, that would work uh, in, in the sense of I've got something in my Facebook group and you should go over there because it's cool, right? So it could be just value, hey, knocked out this awesome post in my Facebook group this morning you guys need to check this out. It's brilliant. <laughs> Should be, could be some free training. Could be you've done some interviews with an authority figure in there. You could give away scripts. You could give away guides. You could give away templates, all of which I've given away dozens of examples of in, in my group. There's a link below, like I say. A um, whole bunch of free stuff in there. Templates. How to hit, hit, hit X dollar figure without Y. Now, of course, this is for in the MMO uh, coaches affiliate marketers space, but it can apply it to anything as well. It's like I say before, how to hit biggest goal. So how to lose 10 pounds without uh, diet and exercise. <laughs> wow, diet pills, there we go. Is there anything, if you're a, a, an existing coach or an existing affiliate marketer, is there anything that you can leverage from your program itself? Now, what I mean by that is if you have something inside there, and I'm not saying like go and plagiarize that information or anything like that. Please don't think I'm giving you the green light for that. What I mean is, is there something in there that solves that particular problem? So for example, I could say, you're inside my ultimate marketing mastermind. One of the things I teach is how to rapidly gain authority in the eyes of your prospects, which then makes the rest of the selling process that much easier. So that's just one thing. So therefore what I did is I just referenced what was in my existing program to explain how that might work, right? Hopefully it makes sense. Um, what else? Last one, not least, we're nearly there. Appreciate you guys sticking around. You need a CTA, you need a call to action. So many examples I've seen out there where it's like, here's my thing, which is awesome. Like my done for you thing and all this kind of stuff. And then there's like no next step. So imagine that there's going to be a subset of your audience that want to see what's next. How do they get that next thing 
And if you're not giving them that opportunity to take that step through that door, then it's a lost opportunity, right? So you must put a call to action. Now, that could be to a myriad of different things. You could go straight to a call. Why don't you lock in a 15 minute chat with our team to see how we can implement a game plan to put this into your specific business. Cool, all right? Messenger, DM me here if you want my additional ninja unicorn source training, right? I don't know, whatever it is. It could go straight through to a sales page of a low ticket item. Okay, that's another option. Now, one of the mistakes I see some coaches make is they will put that straight to their high ticket offer. And you got to think of it like this. Like if I'm, if you and I don't know each other and you're like, hey, here's a lead mate. I'm like, oh, cool. That's some interesting. That's some great stuff. You know, good information that helps me out heaps. Thanks so much. And it's like, uh, and my program's $5,000. Whoa, hang on a minute. Calm down, mate. Like let's, let's, you know, pack up, buy me a drink first, right? And so what happens is going back to my idea of uh, low ticket, high ticket, uh, building trust, credibility, things like that. Um, it's easier to remove that friction because there's a lot of friction around a high ticket offer for, for folks a lot of the time, especially if it's like just a, hey, by the way, here's a lead mate, why my shit? Like, doesn't usually work like that. You're better off just going for something that is lower friction, like a low ticket offer, five, 10, 50, 100 bucks, whatever it is, more likely to get conversions at that point anyway. And then they're in that ecosystem, right? Um, post my group if this gave you value, right? So, Another one is getting them to do a task. Okay, so for example, if you do have a, a Facebook group and you're like, here's my leady magnet thingy, and they're like, wow, this is insane. Oh my God, I like, can't wait to get my hands on that. Um, and then they go through it, they go, this is amazing value. And, and then at the end of it, it just says, if you got value, and there's a very low friction um, ask as well, by the way, if you got value from this, would you mind dropping a couple of lines in my group? It would just really help with the social proof. That would be amazing. Sure, no worries at all, right? And so therefore now you've got some more social proof, which then elevates your authority even further and leverage that in your content, start talking about all that type of stuff. Right, we're nearly at the end. Thank you so much for sticking by through this. Now, one other thing I'm gonna give you guys is the four phase process that I scaled, used to scale my business to 51K in a single month. Uh, now there is a short presentation that goes along with this. I'd highly encourage you to jump over that and check it out. It's about 16 minutes long. It gives an entire overview of my whole business process. Pretty badass. But this is it. Pretty awesome. Now I'm going to leave a link below where you can swipe this entire thing. This also is the written version of my entire business process. Uh, kind of like a, a memorandum, if you will. Pretty cool. Right. So I'm going to leave that below. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Drop any comments. Let me know any thoughts about this and look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Cheers.